All right, I started to write a word here. So float mechanism okay. ca controls, C-O-N-T-R-O, -O, controls the level of fuel in the bowl, of fuel in the bowl. All right, without the float, you must have a monkey. Monkey. Oh. That's right. You have to have a carburetor monkey if you don't have a float mechanism. Uh, the level must be maintained. Level must be maintained. Where? Where is that level supposed to be? Very good. Slightly below, slightly below. The outlet. of the discharge nozzle. All right, so customer comes to you and says, hey, my little Cessna 140, the, the carburetors, every time I leave it in the hangar, I come back to a puddle on the floor. What is the problem with the carburetor? Well, device is right. That's normal for a Stromberg. Yeah, Stromberg. Yeah, Stromberg. Why is it doing that? Because all, all just out of the they just, because the Stromberg, Strombergs tend to. Yeah. Does not the needle and the seat don't provide for whatever reason on that particular carburetor? They just don't match real well. So it's really common. Um, it shouldn't, but it, it just is what it is. And you can fix that to an extent. You could take the steel needle and you can. Um, like just like you lap it in, just like yeah. you're doing, just lap it in. And I think that it has a little bit to do with there's just not enough pressure on it, the way the, the float is designed. It could yeah. use a little more pressure, and I think it would work. Yeah. But if you, itself, what's that? The float itself is like a little weight. Oh, I, know. I kept thinking of her, but there's something I want to do. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let's just we'll talk about the Marvel Shovelers. It's, some people call them the Marvelous Dribbler. It's a stupid name. It's a wonderful carburetor. The Marvel Shoveler, which is also Precision, which was also another one they've been bought and sold. But I just call them Marvel Shoveler. So Marvel Shoveler, and it's leaking. And you know, pilot says, "Hey, there's a what? What is the pro? Is that a problem? Is it not? Is it?" Yeah. So it could be the float levels too high. Usually not. It's like so. The question is, has it always done that? Yeah, it's always done that. Well, maybe your float level's a little too high. Um, no, it just started doing that. What possibly could be the problem? Did the shims under the needle change? No. It just started doing this. Shims don't wear out. They're washers, and then the seat. Maybe some dirt got past the screen. That's a good one. You know, you got a little booger sitting there. Okay, it's kind of... Usually not likely because the fuel going through washes it. Right? Yeah. So what is most likely? The discharge nozzle. Floats are notorious. That's what I was going to get. I have a collection of floats that are full of fuel. Yeah. And so you you have the Stromberg, and when you get into the, the other ones, you, it can be the same thing. There's these tiny little brass floats. And, this, and what happens is that solder tends to leak a little bit, and they'll get little pinholes, 
and they're very difficult. We'll watch a little video if you haven't already. Uh, they're very difficult to find. They're for a while there. You know, it's just like one of those things. So uh, Marvel Shebler, I know they had the brass floats. Then they went to a composite float. And then they went to a white plastic float. They were hollow. The plastic floats were hollow. They had a foam float that wasn't hollow, but I think the uh, fuel was uh, messing with the foam. It wasn't a closed cell foam. It was like a foam that was covered with a plastic. So I think if it got in the plastic, it, it caused some sort of problems. And like if you could, you know, if they got a hole in it, they could start to sink. So, um, and, and these are the things. The, one of the white ones I have, somebody brought it in here. You know, I was just working. They came in, hey, I, you guys are schooling. What do you, what do you think is going on here? And I'm like, oh, we can open it up. Open up like, whoa, look at that. Your float is completely, it was like three quarters of the way full of fuel. You know, and, and yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll remind me tomorrow, I'll bring it. Uh, yeah. Was the needle beyond the stick? Yeah, you know, yes, okay. Um, well, actually, it's, it is a problem with, with uh, marbles. So, see, brass, composite, white, brass, composite. <laughs> so we're all the way to back to composite. So these new composite floats, so you can literally cut them in half, and they still work. In fact, Marvel says, hey, we've actually been experimenting with these. We've had a few that have broken in the field, and nobody knew it. Like one float pontoon broke off, and they opened the carburetor, and the carburetor had been running flawlessly. There was no, zero complaints. And one float was just broken or something. It's like it still worked. And so... Um, because I'm still displacing the level. Yep, yep, and they don't get leaks and holes. So w this thing that I'm doing to my airplane, this upgrade, I had to take the carburetor off to drill the hole out to get the carburetor bulb in. I thought, well, I got it off. I should check my floats, and sure enough, I had the old brass ones. I thought, well, let's be safe, and so I bought the composite ones. And one of the things that you have to do when you work on floats, especially with marbles, because the float is on the top, all together and the bowl is just an empty bowl and it just goes on. And so like with the ones you're working on, the Stromberg, you can look at the float and you can play with it. You can see it go up and down. You can't, you've got a float on the top part and then you put the, and then you have no idea what happened. Mm -hmm. So it's completely open and then suddenly it's closed. So you have to have this tool, you, you guys do it. You have to put this tool on that has, it's open and you have to, Put the carburetor sideways and measure around it do this way measure around it because they can actually touch the sidewall if you're not careful so i did you know, i had to do all that and have to adjust the floats and it was a pain in the butt so. uh discharge nozzle are these all these part numbers that I've seen? what's that are these all the part numbers and terribly named tools that i've seen yeah <laughs> uh float mechanism one two three contains the float mechanism contains the Contains the, so the mechanism, the entire mechanism here, has the float, float, the needle, and the seat. All right, a repeat here. Fuel level in bowl is critical. Too low equals what? Too lean. Lean. Too high. Too rich. Rich. Okay, I'm going to not write a bunch of stuff here because it's a little lengthy. But I'll put the note. Measuring fuel level. I'm just going to talk to you about it. So if we have a bowl, this is the Stromberg, and we have, uh oh, I'm opening this up, so I'm going to get screwed up. 2.6 is my brush size, let me remember that. And the fuel level should be right here, right? Mm -hmm. And you measure said fuel level, and it should be about, what is it, point Four oh six, I think. Six two, which is three thirty second, right? Yep. That's what it should be, from here to here. But you've measured it, 
and you come up with a number of 4 point or point four two. Is my float level too high or too low? Too, too, too low. low. It's too low. Oh, no, sorry, too this low. is a bigger too number. Low. So a bigger number measured down would be somewhere around there. So that means that your level too is erroneously too low because the number is too high. Now the way you measure this, and I'm sorry, I probably should have been paying more attention to you guys. You use that depth micrometer and there is a thing called, that was your cue to be right, meniscus. meniscus. <laughs> the fuel actually the rolls up here. We talked about this in NDT class, right? Surface tension and all that stuff. We'll cover that again in NDT class. So near the edges, you can't be near the edge. And uh, you don't get a half an inch inside that carburetor. There's about one spot. And so what you do is you have your your um, your depth micrometer, right? And you're going to screw it down, screw it down. Use a flashlight, screw it down. Then all of a sudden, whoop, all the yeah. fuel just jumps up on it. That was it. That was your spot. You're done. But now you're looking at it going, well, shoot, it's actually way under the level. No, it's just that's the meniscus ran up it. Okay, so you stop the minute it jumps on there, you take a reading. Then I want you to take three readings, so you dump it out, do it again. You don't just take the micrometer, put it in and do it again, micrometer, do it again. You must dump, did you dump the fuel out? <laughs> you got to dump it out three times and let it refill. Yeah. You dump it all the way out? You don't have to dump it all the way out, but enough to engage the float again. So the float works and stops. Just, just enough to make the float actuate again, I think is fine. In the field, I would, I would dump it all the way out and redo it. Then you're supposed to obviously have a specific a fluid with a very specific gravity at a specific height and everything else. So that's what we're doing. So measuring the fuel level. And then if we did, and we covered this in class the other day, if we determined that um, a higher seat, uh, I can write this one, so uh, float over half, solvent, Edge, measure away from the edge, so measure. Away from the edge. Um, adjustment is made by adding or removing shims. It's done really the same way with the marble shebler. It's just done dry. It's a little easier because it's a little more exact. And so what you do is, like with this new kit I bought, they, for whatever reason, they want you to take the seat out, chain, take the shims out, they give you two shims, a thick one and a fat one. And it says it may need thin, it may need the thick, it may need both. And oh, by the way, make sure that when you screw in the seat, that it's at least six inch pounds of drag going in. I'll tell you from experience, the seat's $100 and you only get about two shots at it before you gotta throw it away because it's got a nylon insert in it. And after that, it's gonna go in less than six pounds, so get it right. So two shims, I put it in, and then you, use a, you, have a, you put the gasket on, and then you use a drill bit of a certain size near the end of the float. It's, you'll see. You'll do it. Um, I like it better because it's dry and you're you kind of and then if it's not right you either take out a shim or bend this tab and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. I'm curious. Uh, the seat, is the seat and the needle like a, a something that comes in like pairs? Like it did. For a hundred bucks I got a needle and a seat. Okay. So but it does not say this is a match set. Do not. Okay. It's just for 100 bucks, I got a needle in the seat, so I'm like, well, I'll use the new needle in the new seat. You know, what am I going to save it for? I was really curious. I was actually watching um, an old 1940 version of the Stromberg. They're breaking it down. It's like from the edu uh, Department of Education. Okay. And the guy goes, you know, if you replace it, you need to replace this because it's like a, for some reason, there's a match. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, I would say no. Okay. When we, I, I, I had a carburetor repair, ran a carburetor repair shop. I didn't do a lot of the carburetors, but I oversaw them. And no, it was, especially Stromberg's, it was needles, seats, were com different components. They didn't even come together. 
And then there were different types of seats through the years. The, I told you the steel, the Delron, the rubber tipped. And so, um, all right, so add or remove shims. Uh, let's see, adding shims raises the seat. Adding shims raises the seat, the seat. Um, fuel shuts off sooner. So level is lower. I can just put that because I don't have to put, and the opposite is true. Removing shims lowers the seat, fuel shuts off later. So raise the seat means you lower the level. Doesn't make sense, it's backwards. I mean, obviously it makes sense, but. <laughs> Sorry. Um, have an A point in there for something. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have put this here. Measuring fuel level, A, Stromberg. Stromberg. B, Marvel Shoveler. Marvel Shoveler. And I told you, this float is measured dry. Um, and then checked with a sight glass. You guys are going to do it, so. See, I'll put this here so my never. This is why I laughed. Needle and seat with shop air. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I would have kept those flows. I mean, they're flat as a freaking pancake. It was freaking hilarious. Fuel strainer. Every carburetor fuel system that I can think of has some sort of fuel strainer. So again, the system is, you know, you have your fuel tanks, it goes to the gas escalator, which is the ship's the aircraft's fuel strainer. It's really just a screen and it catches water and then it goes through a hose into the carburetor Carburetors all have little screens. Uh, carburetors, fuel injection, uh, pressure car, they all have a little screen somewhere. Um, usually found, usually, well, it is always usually found on the inlet. Check annually or every 100 hours. Uh, maybe the the aircraft maintenance manual has a different time. It might say 25 hours. You know, it's going to depend on the airplane. But for absolute absolute certainty, I will never let it go past an annual. And I wouldn't let it go. 100 hours be really pushing it. But absolutely every annual. Um, also drain. I'm just going to add this one. Drain bowl. There's a drain on them, and you should really drain them. I have taken apart carburetors in the field, and you can see a line of corrosion. Mm. And what happened is water got into the carburetor, and it sits at the bottom, and it never goes anywhere. It'll sit there for years and years and years, corroding. And uh, you take out the boiler, like, whoa! You can see this ring and stuff, it's pretty nasty. So <laughs> yeah, that's why you take the plug and, and drain it out every year. Uh, you all right? Yeah, okay. Huh? You haven't complained, so I don't know what the hell to think. Because oh, <laughs> you're talking before you write, so I'm able to write it down almost the same speed as you usually do. Okay, write. so how, what am I doing that's working? So right now you're talking, okay. you're saying what you're going to write before you're writing it. So I'm hearing it, I'm able to write. That works same, good? Yeah. Whereas usually, usually you'll, you'll write, write and then you'll talk, so then I'm behind you. Oh, you gotta let me know this stuff. Oh, oh. no, you're, All right. you're moving now, so I got, nothing, I got nothing to say. I know, but if I can improve on what I'm doing, I want to improve. All right, throttle plate. Throttle plate, 
<laughs> what do you mean by C? C. It's like all the way out. All the way out. It don't matter. I had to go back. Please. All right. <laughs> throttle plate. All right. It's a throttle plate. And so I've used this word. It's the butterfly type. I don't know. It's just, I guess it goes back to valves, you know, when you, there's different types of valves. Maybe it's a thing I picked up from the Navy because there's butterfly valves, uh, shipboard stuff. Well, it's not shipboard, it's just what they are. Water valves are the butterfly type that are quick closing, or there's the um, valve type that we screw down. Yeah. All right. Uh, why do I got this? Closed. Butterfly type, if, when it closed. Closed. When it's closed. When it's closed, it's going to obviously restrict air and fuel entering the engine, which is go slow. So closed, restricts. Restricts the air, which then restricts the fuel. Its primary job is to restrict the air. I probably shouldn't write fuel because air and fuel. Um, its job is to restrict the air. It restricts the air. And by that, it will then demand less fuel. If we look at the continental fuel injection system, which we will, which it's more fun if I wouldn't have told you this. You get there and like, what? It doesn't, I'm just telling you, yeah, it doesn't measure air at all. So it doesn't measure it, but you still have to have a throttle valve mm -hmm. because that's what slows the engine down. You restrict the air. And by restricting the air, you slow the engine down. If you slow the engine down, it's going to slow the, the fuel delivery system. So it's all, all done on air on that, the throttle is. So it restricts the air, um, restricts air, entering engine. And that equals go slow. For those of you that need that. And the, I'll put this was power slow. There you go, closed position. That makes more sense. And we'll go this one, an open position. Open position, that is all the way open. So max air, max air, which equals go fast. I know, that's what I'm trying to do. Idle circuit. I do have a question. I know it's on uh, a like little hole, and they never talk about what that little hole is. So it's just an engineer thing? Or? Yeah, we're off idle. That makes more sense. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, which made me think of something else. But I believe that when the throttle plate is closed all the way, there's not enough air getting around the edges. And so they figured out that that calibrated leak will provide enough air to make the idle that they want out of it. Okay. That's my that th theory. Uh, you'll notice that that throttle plate is screwed in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So using screws and nuts anywhere on an intake system is considered an absolute no-no. You do not. Uh, if you guys would have got here earlier today, I'm rebuilding the airbox, my airplane. Mm -hmm. And so, which is a, a real puzzle. I mean, it was easy to get apart. And <laughs> when I got down to the shaft, it was so hard, I just cut it with a hacksaw. Well, I, I bought a new one. It was wore out. So okay. it was a $600 shaft. I'm not going to, I know. You should look at this shaft. It's like, you paid what for that? You're an idiot. I got something else I want to say, Kevin. Um, well, I guess the bearings came with it. But anyway. I got a thought center. I want to read it. I know. Um, but, but yeah, no screws or anything. So all this had to be riveted together. And it's like a puzzle to get it. It's like, okay. Which goes first? Because if I do this, and then I kind of rivet this, and it's really interesting. I kind of show you, but uh, yeah, I've never seen that of all the years I've been using that. Um, we need to take that across the street tomorrow and blow it out with some shop air. Um, yes, pressurize it. Yes. First, it's sitting close to the street. Unless the fan, the fan's running. Yeah, that's running. Yeah, blow harder than that. I'm surprised, right? I'm surprised. <laughs> I know, and I'm surprised that the bulbs have never gone on these. Anyway, now you jinxed it. Getting back to what I'm talking about is, uh, oh, we can talk about this. I don't care. Um, no screws. So this butterfly valve to the shaft, it used Manel rivets. I've never bucked Manel rivets before. And and uh, the good news is they came 
um, instead of one and a half D, they're like two D sticking out. So you're sure to bend them over. So. Nice. <laughs> oh, yes. So, but I got it. It just took two of us and a four X gun oh, to do eighth inch rivets. Wow. And I was, da, 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 da. but uh, okay. So uh, well, yeah, there was a point to this. Um, you'll notice that your butterfly valve is screwed in there. But if you look at it, the, not the head, but the, the size of the threads, you should see a cross in it or at least a hash mark. There's a special tool that you put on there and you twist it and there's like a, a blade yeah. that goes into the end of the screw and smushes, smushes it out. So, yeah, it's, it's, that's how they safety. I was thinking about like the one way, the one way screws where you, it like locks into the one direction but you can't, it like slips out. No, you're thinking of bathroom stall technology. That's so people don't take them apart and steal them. Yeah. No, <laughs> they would okay. still rattle and fall out. This is so it doesn't rattle and fall out. <laughs> We did. All right. I didn't lose a screen. I yeah, still we, have one. We lost the running, so we still have the leverage. Huh? Can we all huddle around your screen? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's still running, right? Yeah, it's still running. It's going to blow up. Yeah. We'll wait for the mushroom cloud. Step on the left rudder and feather the prop on the left. No, now we give up. Now we give up. I think it's not over you, maybe. Well, it should have kept running. That does have a template. Well, it's been a bad year for technology, huh? You know what works? Idle circuit. All right. When can you guys see okay? All right. Idle circuit. So when the throttle is closed, idle position, very little air is flowing and the venturi is ineffective. So when the throttle is closed. When the throttle is closed, idle position. Idle position. Very little air is flowing. Very little air is flowing, and the venturi is ineffective. <laughs> is ineffective. Thus the need for an idle circuit. Thus the need for an idle circuit. It's too low for you guys too, huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. Your screen blocks it. Well, I can't. <laughs> no little news on my screen. Well, that desk lowers, doesn't it? Just lower it down and sit at the, yeah, the chair. Yeah, sit down. <laughs> guys and your ideas. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's angry. It's so angry. It's the red ring of death. Every time I hear that. You're supposed to dust your electronics. What? He's so angry. Oh, there's literally you're just oh, angry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <quit. laughs> That's the need for an idle circuit. When the throttle plate is closed. If I can roll it up, how's that? That works too, huh? All right, when the throttle plate is closed. Oh! oh. oh. Not as angry. What? Now I have, that one's going to go out because the Oscar movie. Yeah, I unplugged it and plugged it back in, as a true mechanic would do. Whoa, when the throttle is closed, oops. Is that supposed to be open now? Huh? When the throttle is closed, the displacement throttle plate is closed, the displacement of the piston creates a low pressure or vacuum. Auto plate is closed. The displacement of the pistons you did what in your cup? Creates a low pressure or vacuum vacuum in the manifold system in the manifold above the throttle plate. A 
above the throttle plate. So this vacuum that is created is used to draw out fuel from So I'm thinking and writing at the same time. Sometimes. From the um, fuel orifices. Idle, idle orifices. There, I like that one. Sometimes you will note that the throttle plate lines up exactly at a hole. Well, how do you explain that one? Science. Science. Follow the science. All right. So some carbs. Some carbs utilize the air flowing past the throttle plate and a little hole. It's a venturi effect. At that little spot where the throttle plate and the hole are, it's a little kind of venturi. So it's going to create a low pressure right there, even lower. It's going to suck the fuel out. So, some carbs, some carbs. Utilize the air flowing, flowing uh, past the throttle. Throttle plate. Flowing past the throttle plate. I want to say next to an orifice. Next to an orifice. To draw out fuel. To draw out fuel. And we could call that a venturi effect. And I hope that makes sense. Air flowing past the throttle plate. Next to an orifice, draw out draw out fuel venturi effect. Those are the jets, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but if it's a jet right next to So what I'm saying is if we look at a, a picture of of a throttle of a, a throttle body or the throat, right? And so we've got the plate right here. Just a little bit of room there and a little bit of room there, then Sometimes we have a little hole right here for fuel, a little hole right here for fuel, and a little one right there for fuel. And then what I'm saying is there's no air flowing past a venturi, so there's no venturi happening. So how is it drawing out? Well, everything, purple, everything up here is a vacuum. So that's vacuum. So since it's a vacuum, it's going to naturally draw the fuel out. Boom. Naturally draw the fuel out. But then somebody say, well, this one down here really isn't that much of a vacuum because it's, you know, it's right next to your ambient air pressure, which is, you know, all ambient. So, eh, come on. But it's drawing it right through there. So that's a Venturi. Oh. And this little spot right there is a Venturi. And so because that's a Venturi, they can pull it out. You broke Oscar. So like the two, <laughs> he's like, so we're calling the Stromberg, or we have the two iron? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, some people might argue and say, oh, that's not really the case. So the vacuum goes right to that spot, too. Okay, we're both right. I don't have a problem with that. So I'm sure the vacuum goes right into that area, too, and it's low pressure, but it's also a venturi going right past it. So you can look at it either which way. It's going to work. It's true for the vacuum to happen. Not really. No? Because if, we, if I sealed this all the way up, I mean, I sealed it. If I sealed it good, I, I'll use super glue and RTV and seal it, and those pistons start going, I'm going to have a massive vacuum up there because oh, okay. the piston's pulling back. Okay. Right? This sucks. All right. Let me see. Would there be for any reason the valve would completely close? No. And it wouldn't run. you got to have some sort of hole to get air through. 
It, it's not a lot of air. No, I, I, I think I was reading something, but I'm going to have to go back and reread. Oh, that it's all the way closed? We call it all the way closed, but there's always a little tiny gap. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's a little machine. But you'll actually see that the edges are actually chamfered so that it fits almost like perfect in there. It's like, whoa, you really thought about it. Uh, where was I here? Uh, several pounds, I'll just show you. Oscar. Oscar, what do you break it. Boy, I'm kick you. Oh. Don't touch it. Dude, don't mess with that one. Yeah, you broke that one. Now you break this one. Uh, let me see. Oh, okay, here. <laughs> I, get, I get Kevin's other angle. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a better, better angle? Oops, I kind of messed up on my... I'll just make this one a circle. So, uncovered passages. Uncovered. And we're talking about the... So I think I switched pages. That's what it is. I didn't get that far. Okay, I just switched pages. Never mind. So, we got that. That's right. Idle circuit. Although, that's... What the hell? I don't know. That's the need for an idle circuit. Oh, yeah, I care. Point two. Vacuum. Some carburetors. Oh, that was... That's why. That was I, I. There we go. Because Michael's, he's going to get all upset with me if I don't do this right. I, I. Okay, did that. That's good. Moving on to the next one. Now I'm upset. You can change it. All right, this is, all right, we're going back here. This is way, this is way out here. Going way out. System contains. System. This is, what is this? The idle system consists of. It has the idle discharge nozzles. These nozzles, what about them? Well, they may just be drilled passages, which they usually are. Because we already covered the main circuit. May be just drilled passages. Maybe several passages, there usually are. So you want to look for them. Sometimes you have, as it's in the closed position, so um, I'll write that. In the closed position, in the closed position, some passages may be above the throttle plate. while others are below. So going back up this little drawing I put, I've got three right there. Well, then you could potentially even have one like right there. So that would make four of them. Okay, so if that's the case, in this particular case, if that's the case in this case, yeah, sure. Um, so this one's spraying out fuel, this one's spraying out fuel, this one's spraying out fuel, and of course I'm going to have the, the, the idle tube here, the tube coming up that's got all the fuel in there. And at some point somewhere, we're going to have an air bleed that's going to put some bubbles into it, right? Yep. Well, this one right here is also going to add bubbles for a little while. For a little while, then eventually, as this opens up more, as this opens up more, this stops being an air bleed and reverts to a fourth jet. You're transitioning off, but you're still an idle circuit because all these are working, but you're getting more and more air. So as that the pressure there is still less than the pressure in the main uh, return, in the, the main nozzle. Uh, your main nozzle is still going to be over here, 
and not working yet. So you, you may still just be transitioning off of idle. So when it's closed, one or two is fine. Then it opens a little bit. You need three, opens a little bit, you need four. Then as you get to the point where the four are not enough, well, about that time, this will start working. It'll start shutting down the other ones. See, A, B, we see, uh, others are below. So that's kind of what I said. As, as the throttle plate is open, more holes are exposed, adding more fuel. As throttle plate opens, opens, more holes are exposed. I'll say to vacuum because that makes sense. Adding more fuel. Uncovered passages, that's below the throttle plate. Uncovered passages may be used as an air bleed. So uncovered. Uh, I'm not gonna say uncovered. I'm gonna put um, holes. Passages is a better word than holes. That's what I want. <clears throat> Passages below throttle plate. Can be used as an air bleed. There, that worked. Two, idle metering jet. Why? Because you <laughs> still need to still need to regulate fuel, even at idle. Even at idle. What I miss? Oh, you said why and there's a guy from the mask. Oh, why? P A R T Y. Gotcha. Oh, the mask. Okay. Uh, Got it. Oh. P A R T Y. Huh. Still brain hurts. Brain is full. Yep. Sorry, I'm. Oops. Am I good to move? I did. Not yet. Still hurt. Yeah. I'm more along the Don't Van Halen. Why is a crooked letter? I forgot. I don't know. It's a lyric. Okay, moving on. You guys are doing good tonight. Thank you. Is it 17? What? Oh, it's night 17. Oh, it's time to go, huh? All right, so we're gonna we're gonna take off with. Well, I gotta remember where we are though. Oh man, I touched the thing. Oh, no. What was it supposed to be at? 2.6. 2.6. Inches of mercury. <laughs> <laughs> Inches of mercury. Inches of mercury. 2.6. All right. 2.6. So what do we just do? Okay, so two. No, we're on three. Yeah, we're on three. Idle mixture adjustment. Okay, that's where we're going tomorrow. Somebody's going to tell me, and I'm going to go back. I got you. Down. Man, I wrote a lot. I'm tired.